so excited to tell you more about Canopy. I think we just heard some great examples of storytelling um, and how that can inspire people and inspire people to want to drive action. And what we're really trying to do is help create the tools to make it easier for people to take those actions in their everyday lives. Um, we are on a mission to remove fossil fuels from our households um, and ensure that people can take action. There are a billion machines owned by individuals in our homes that contribute to 35% of emissions in the United States. Um, our goal is to reduce a gigaton of those emissions by helping people adopt clean technologies. The technology to decarbonize the residential sector already exists, things like heat pumps, solar, EVs, um, but a lot of it hasn't gone mainstream, and we need to help make these um, technologies the clean, um, the default technologies. Um, so why is this so hard? For the average homeowner, there are huge barriers. These include low awareness and motivation. Everyone's busy. Your water heater might not be top of your list um, of things to do today. Um, there are high upfront costs. It's really hard to navigate the available incentives. We, again, with the Inflation Reduction Act, there's all this money now, which is really exciting. Um, but it's hard to figure out how, how to navigate that, how to build that in with state and local incentives. Um, and fill out all these forms and again for people that are busy and trying to work and take care of kids and, and do other things that everyday Americans are trying to do, um, they need more help to do that. Um, there's also a lot of misinformation about what products work in what climates. Um, we're actually doing a project with a group in Alaska right now that's really amazing. They're helping people move off of fuel oil, which has become ex extremely expensive, to adopt heat pumps. Um, that work really well in cold climates, and they're very happy with those solutions. And so how do we tell more of those stories um, to help adopt um, great technologies? Um, installing this equipment can also be, involve a lot of retrofitting work, um, and you need to prioritize how you're going to um, update things in your home. And last but not least, much of the workforce is actually really resistant to change, <laughs> um, as you might know, and learning how to install new equipment is tough. Um, but some good news, I just mentioned the Inflation Reduction Act, there's really big incentives to both help drive down costs, develop great financing products, which we're going to talk a lot more about tomorrow, and build up the workforce. Um, but we still have this consumer demand problem at the local level. Um, so what do we need to drive the adoption at the pace we need? On the upstream side, we need to develop and train the workforce create more government policy to promote electrification and phase out fossil fuels, and move faster on providing financing. And there's a huge piece of this that's local. Based on insights from the field of community-based social marketing and what we actually see driving results, um, the number one factor to shift people to action is conversations with trusted advisors, things like your friends and family, neighbors, workplace colleagues, and community leaders. Um, and there are amazing community-based organizations that are doing this work now, um, but we need to help them to scale. So that's where Canopy comes in. We're helping build digital tools that help individuals navigate these processes and support and amplify the community efforts to reach scale and impact. Um, so we're starting to do this for you through a few different channels. The first is really partnering with companies to engage their employees to both reduce scope three emissions um, by helping employees cut carbon at home. We're able to help companies easily measure and reduce those scope three emissions from employee commuting and working from home, which as we know, after COVID, more and more employees are now working from home, not going into the office, which is great for cutting commute, but all of those emissions, then you're you know, spending more time in your home, keeping your heat on, keeping your lights on, um, using a lot more energy at home um, is, then, is then creating more of an impact. Um, research shows that 90% of employees who are engaged in their company's sustainability work say it enhances their job satisfaction and feelings about their company. And it contributes to the ability to hire and retain those employees. Two in three workers say they would give preference to environmentally responsible organizations and the dimensions that have the biggest impact on that satisfaction are incorporating sustainability into their job and into their personal life. And these are just some of the companies that we're starting to work with. Um, the second channel that we're really starting to work with is, is with cities and those amazing community-based organizations. Cities have big, ambitious climate goals. We'll hear from some of them later this week. 
um, but don't have enough capacity and funding to achieve them at the pace that we need. Um, buildings and transportation are often the two biggest sources of emissions for most cities, um, and they're really hard to reduce, especially retrofitting buildings. So we're starting to work um, with some cities and some of these community-based organizations to provide the tools that they need um, to scale and reach impact. So here's just a quick snapshot of how it works. Um, most people can't electrify everything at once, so we help prioritize um, how we can help people based off of things like emissions, cost, and personal preferences, things like health and comfort. Um, I was actually listening to a review of an incredible study that the Pacific Northwest National Lab is um, working on, and they, the top two motivations for people to make some of these upgrades were health of their family and kids, which makes a lot of sense, but number two is pets. Um, so really trying to understand like what are some of the motivations that are help, helping people um, think about these things and then you know talk to them in a way that makes sense. Um, so we then make it um, easy to take action with step-by-step -step guides, try to understand you know what is step one, step two to take an action, make recommendations for things like local installers, help identify those incentives and rebates that are available to you. And then along the way, provide concierge support, this sort of high-touch, one-on-one um, support to answer questions, um, provide that technical knowledge, and provide people with the encouragement to keep going. We found that coaching aspect of just help, helping someone move along step-by-step step is really valuable. Um, and related, in our work with communities, we've similarly heard that that one-on-one -on -one engagement is incredibly valuable. One of the key ways that community-based organizations have been able to help people make these upgrades in their homes is providing that support. Um, I was talking to someone in Burlington last week, and he said their problem was that they put too much love into their work. They're spending too much time with each individual person, um, which is, you know, it's great, and we want that, and that's how um, the work is getting done. But how can we provide some tools to help make these processes easier so that more of that love is getting spread to more people um, in the communities that need it? Um, we have 121 million homes that we ideally need to electrify um, to get to zero, and so there's a lot of work um, to be done. So one of the things that we're working on is building out a, um, a way to build an advisor program so that volunteers can come in, help answer those questions, provide testimonials and case studies, and make it much easier to spread that um, community advisor and support in an easier way. And finally, we help aggregate the data that can scale adoption. Most cities and community groups do not have the th data that they need to communicate with and reach their populations at scale. So helping cities understand what people are interested in, they can help aggregate that demand, um, build much more targeted campaigns, and help reach their ambitious goals. Um, so if you want to check it out, here's a quick <laughs> Quick um, link, we have a free service for any individual that's interested in getting a plan um, and happy to talk more. Thanks so much for having me.